James Osborne making his ring walk with his family uh, tonight. That support's so important, and they'll have loved what they've seen recently from Ozzy. Uh, he is pushing forward and making giant progress, fight by fight. It was a huge step up here in this ring back in February when he overcame the experienced Grant Dennis. He, he showed flow and versatility and craft in his work that night. It was a big career highlight. Might have to be a different style tonight to, to get something out of a day gap. We know plenty about Victor. He's a, a bit of a puzzle. He's not expected to win tonight, Andy, but Osborne's going to have to work for his openings. Definitely, he's aggressive, Osborne. He's 32. He's not one of these guys who wants to hang around. He wants real fights. He took Sir Bomo on his debut, for example, who's a really good fighter, an away corner fighter, but a really good fighter. He wants to win titles, he wants to test himself, and Victor is a proper road warrior, Victor Adair. He boxed last week in Leicester, the week before in Bournemouth, won a couple of weeks before that in Oldham. He's been the distance with some good guys. If Osborne can get him out of there, then that'll be impressive. There you can see, four years older at 36, Zidega, and just a couple of in inches uh, advantage in, in both height and in reach but all that experience he can call upon to help him out against Aussie tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for six three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. This bout is brought to you by Johnny Clark of Top Tier Boxing and the proud sponsors by Insulation, Synergy Direct and Think Green Partners. This bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, your timekeeper at the bell, Brett Bowles, and your third person in the ring in charge of the action, referee Amy Poo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the black with white trim, his official weight of 12 stones, 4 pounds. He has a record of 99 fights, 3 draws, 3 wins, and one of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Southwark, England, United Kingdom, Victor Edaga! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks. His official weight of 12 stones, 4 pounds. He is currently undefeated with 5 wins. And one of those wins come in by way of knockout. Hailing from Wickford, Essex, England, United Kingdom. James Lassay Osborne. Gotta love Victor Hidaga. Arms casually rested on the top ropes as though he's just about to go out for a Sunday stroll rather than face up against an unbeaten prospect about to try and take his head off. You wouldn't expect anything less, Andy. No, you wouldn't, as we outlined these, trodden these boards many, many times before, and he'll be expecting to do it in the next couple of weeks ago, most likely after this, so he's not planning on getting stopped tonight. But Osborne, as I say, is the kind of guy who wants to win by stoppage. Southport, you look at the back on him, he's really, really strong. Yeah, we saw that, that kind of front foot aggressive style when he stopped the really tough Ray Bear uh, last year. A bit more sort of defensively orientated or mindful last couple of fights where he's um, he's shown a bit more of, of what he's capable of but I think it might be as Andy suggests reverting to type for Osborne I think the way that uh, Hidaga fights he he will need to be a bit more aggressive and try and prize a few openings or force the issue force a few openings Adega there though just throwing a right hand from from way out takes his feet back into the ropes was there a clash of heads there maybe something happened I think on the inside but there's no damage to either one of them 
Osborne went kind of flying back across the ring from the ropes, his feet well and truly underneath him, but it's been quite messy this, hasn't it? So far, anyway. Yeah, well, Osborne's trying to be aggressive, close the gap, and Hidaga so far is able to read him, avoid the shot, and then tie him up. One, two, three, four, five. Well, they're going to count it. There was seven, a, there was eight. a punch that kind of landed on his body as he was twisting and turning over, but. I mean, he turned his back, but he was momentum was kind of taking him in that way anyway. He's a, probably a bit unlucky there, Pidaga. It'll be interesting to get another look at that. My initial reaction was that something did land, but it was mainly a follow up kind of drag or push which saw him go down. So sometimes you see them given, sometimes you don't. He didn't seem too upset, did he? Well, he was too busy joining the count with the timekeeper. He was. He was tolling the, the numbers as they were coming through. A little bit of showmanship. You don't have to be the champion, the prospect, the up-and-comer to in enjoy the moment. But Osborne's got to kind of try and take some of that away from Edega. He's just trying to skip in with his feet and get close enough, Osborne, which is what he'll have to do because... Adega is a lot taller than him. And every now and again, he'll really just let rip, won't he, the man in the away corner. He'll throw some big, big bombs. And as we discussed earlier on, there's different ways of getting through this if you're boxing out of the away corner. Just tucking up and looking to be purely defensive isn't really that good a policy. He goes for the, the opposite, really, which is to look dangerous sometimes. So if you're Osborne, you've got to think about it. You don't want to do anything too rash. He did manage to land a, a right hook right towards the end of the round there, uh, Osborne. He's got to keep his focus, hasn't he? A bit like uh, Campbell earlier on. And there we see it, Andy. He kind of turned and was going over, and then he cuffed him on the shoulder. And you sort of feel he was going off balance to the canvas anyway. I can see why the referee gave that, though, because he was half-turning, and the final thing that actually really sent him down, I think a push should send him off balance, but what really sent him down in the end was that left hand, and he had kind of spun and shown his back, and it was all a bit clumsy, so I don't really have any issue with that one, I don't think. In the context of the fight, it's unlikely to make too much of a difference. No, I, I don't think we're going to be talking about it at the end. That was a nice little stabbing left hand to the body, though. I just have issue with, was it anywhere near the scoring zone? <laughs> he was facing the other way, and it almost landed on his, his shoulder back. So I don't even think you can register that as a scoring punch if it was under normal fighting circumstances. But that's neither here nor there, I suspect, as we move into the second round. And that's probably the right method of attack from Osborne, is... If he is going to close the gap, once he does that, there's going to be more than one punch being thrown. Exactly, because it's hard work for him to get onto the inside, to get into race. So once he's there, he's he got to let go. He definitely landed that, didn't he? Big left hand. And he's copped on to exactly what's required here, Osborne. Took him around, whether it's himself, the corner between them. But he's copped on that he's got to throw in bunches here. It's exactly what he's doing. And he got his reward with that big left hand. That was a really good bit of work because he got close, dips at the knees, nice quick feet, led off with the right, didn't land, but left him in the perfect position to throw the left, which definitely did land. And he almost sat on the bottom rope there at Eger. And sometimes you see referees give those as knockdowns. Yeah, it was difficult to see. I think either he was stunned by the punch and dipped his legs or he he dipped deliberately because he was trying to get away from any follow-ups and it, it's difficult to read that you could have interpreted that either way but he's holding on Edega now in that corner so and there's maybe some telltale evidence no doubt Osborne's got Edega's attention now he is wired and switched on you can see how wide the eyes the eyes are in concentration
He's got to throw something as Osborne comes forward there, Adega eventually throws that jab and you see what it did. It made Osborne take his feet back out and, and reset, but he cannot allow him just to scurry in on him, which is exactly what has happened here. Good upper body movement there from Adega to stay out of the way, but he can't just allow Osborne to just skip in at him because he's good at it. Yeah, and the, and the feints and the upper body movement, they forced a reaction out of Adega, didn't he, in that corner? And even although nothing came of it, he kind of almost earned himself an opportunity, Osborne, by exactly those tactics. So this is a change in the play and exactly what's required from Osborne. He's getting some reactions out of Adega. And because of those reactions, he might, going forward, earn himself a little opportunity or two. He's well set up, isn't he, Osborne? He's got nice balance. And that right hand did land into the body, and then he just uncoiled it, took him into the right position to throw that left, and he just lets it go. He's almost square as he throws it, but he's got that kind of upper body strength whereby, with the rotation from the hips, he can generate the power. Yeah, I've, I've called his last couple of fights, Osborne, and he is learning fast on the job. And it's probably no surprise, he, he was a ground worker until last September, so he's working full time, tying it in with boxing. As you know, Andy, so well, it's so hard to. You know, I mean, it's almost impossible to combine combine the two. But he went full time pro last summer, and I, I think you've really seen the benefit of that over his last couple of fights. And I think he's because of it, he's learning really fast on the job. You speak to any fighter, and they'll tell you what an enormous difference it makes to be to be full-time just because you have the opportunity to properly rest and recover basically you can still train hard alongside a, a full-time job and they do but that kind of holy trinity of training nutrition and recovery the recovery aspect of it just gets neglected through no fault of their own well you we all know it us oh clipped him on the way in that was with the first shot and it was a sharp, clipping right hook there from Osborne. He was firing now. He's got a bit of flow and rhythm to his, his work. A lot of confidence bursting through as well. Body shot gets through. But yeah, I mean, we all know, come back, whether you've got a nine to five or your work shift or whatever, come back from work and the idea of going to the gym or going out for a run or, I mean, it's, yeah hard difficult and imagine trying to to be the best you can be as a as a boxer squeezing all of that in with work as well i mean just so difficult he's 32 and given that fact if he's going to really find out how good he can be then i guess he absolutely had to make that move but it won't have been easy because you need some sponsors or you need some financial backing or you need to tighten your belt. It will have come at the sacrifice of, of other things for him, for the people around him. It's, it's a rough old business. It's a really, really tough game, but he definitely, definitely can fight. There's, there's something there, isn't there? And I'm just looking down the list of champions earlier on this afternoon. Andre Jaskalu, who boxes out of Stonebridge. He is the Southern Area champion um, at Super Middle. And he's going to want something like that, isn't he? Sooner rather than later. Absolutely. And the way he's improving fight to fight, certainly since, since last summer, is, uh, is quite notable. So, yeah, the 32, you want to press push absolutely right here, right now. And I, I suspect John Clark and the, the team are exactly trying to do that furnish the opportunity for Osborne. He's still landing with a with a telling shot or two as the rounds go on. Nice little left hook to the to the body. I like the upper body movement. And we've definitely seen sort of one dimension of, of Osborne's work. Or one one of his styles, but there was a lot more to him stylistically in his last couple of fights with more defensively minded he was counter punching 
with flow and rhythm against Grant Dennis. That was a big step up last time up. So, yeah, he's, he's making the improvements, but he's cutting his cloth according to what's exactly required against a guy like this in front of him tonight in, in the shape of Victor Adega. Exactly, it's a different kind of scenario, isn't it? He's got somebody who he's got to hunt down here, basically. That's the that's the job. And it's not that easy because Adega is tall and a little bit ungainly looking at times, but he knows every inch of that ring. He's been in it enough times. So pinning him down and trapping him Corners, is not a straightforward thing to do. Second down, round four. into round four then. Yeah, Osborne just trying to get through with one or so hard shots just to tame Adega, just slow him down a bit. Easier said than done. His head movement's pretty good, isn't it? He just changes that height, dips his knees, drops his height, keeps that head on the move. So trying to catch him with something as he's on the way in isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. And when you're that much taller than him as well, that makes it that bit harder because you need to try and jab down and hit him almost on the top of the head or the shoulders if you're going to just knock him off balance and make him start again. The referee just having a quick word about him coming in low with the head. He does come in low with the head because he's shorter. And as we say, he gets low, but I haven't really seen him bring it up with any kind of intent. No, I think it's I think it's just the styles, isn't it? And you can't really have Osborne changing the method of attack. I, I think this is exactly the right tactics, exactly what's required. The problem is they're both, you know, in both attack being quite aggressive. That was a, oh, he touched down there. I'm pretty sure he touched down there, Adega. There was a, a flurry of three, four, five shots, and he managed just to clip him. I think it was the right hand that got through. I thought Adega touched down there as he was scurrying away. It looked to me like he may well have done as well. If he didn't, then he was perilously, perilously close. How he quite managed to regain his balance without doing it, I'm not quite sure how he could have. But again, it's another example of, of how kind of difficult to get a hold of he is he's got that sort of rubberiness about him hasn't he where he looks like he's about to come apart and you feel like he's just really been caught and then you realize actually he hasn't it's just it's just got that elasticity to him almost yeah and that's what I was just about to say Andy that in terms of the sort of head movement they're both in their own way quite adept at avoiding the other and obviously it's Osborne who's coming forward but He's still in attack, quite defensively minded. He's thinking about what he's doing, upper body movement, head movement. So he's trying to avoid shots. And obviously, Adega's doing the same thing and then smothering him once he get up, get, gets up close. So for different reasons, they're quite successful defensively. And it is just creating certain flashpoints where they might come together. because he's able to, every now and again, herd him back into a corner, Osborne. But when Adega finds himself there, he has been caught a couple of times. That's where Osborne has landed his best shots when he's put him in those corners. But for the most part, he operates quite well out of that corner, Adega. He makes you miss, gets hold of you, turns, does something. It was a withering look from Adega to the referee as he was admonished not to hold, <laughs> just a withering look. He was similar to the look from Osborne when he was warned about the heads. I don't think Osborne can change his tactics at all. I think they're absolutely bang on. And Adega's doing everything he knows um, to avoid getting hurt. And he's absolutely right to be doing that. Taking a few deep breaths, Mike. I am kind of fascinated by these away corner guys, though. Over 400 rounds in the bank for Adega. He's 36 now. You wonder how much longer he'll do this for. But then again, you look at this, and this is six rounds. It's against a good opponent. He's been made to work hard here. He's still up for it. 
you can see that because he wouldn't be here quite simply if he wasn't and it's easy to look at fighters to think well they're doing it for the money and all of that and of course they are of course you are in the in the away corner but you have to have a little bit more motivating you than just that if it's just that then as soon as it gets really hot in there what's really stopping you from just deciding to take a seat and sit it out absolutely it's, it's a burning pride isn't it it's a, a burning pride and an absolute stubborn refusal to to be hurt and stopped now there a left hand getting through and although he's showboating yeah an argument again that the ropes held him up it's kind of amazing to be honest how he didn't go down there how he goes about correcting his balance is actually pretty impressive it's because he was at 45 he? degrees there pretty much and he somehow managed to get his feet back underneath him i think he maybe did get a forearm and elbow just tucked on the rope a little bit which would have given him a split second but no more than that in truth i don't i don't think in any of these exchanges there was one early on where his knees dipped and it was difficult to tell whether that was because he was hurt or he was avoiding the follow-up shots but i think most of the most of the, the problems have been a, an issue of recovering balance rather than anything else i don't think he's necessarily been hurt Adega, or looked like he was he was going to be knocked out but because he's he's backing off he's trying to get out of the way trying to recover his his momentum he he, he has looked like he he could have gone over a couple of times could have been counted as well that was a nice left hand on the inside there from osborne i think a problem he's had tonight is that he's had to start his attacks from so far out because he'll kind of take the center of the ring he'll back off a day have a look at him move that head then take his feet in that it's a long way to go and by the time he gets there when he's throwing his punches he's throwing them from quite a square position like he did there and reaching for them a bit whereas when he got closer there just that bit tighter he could dig his toes in and get a bit more purchase on them it's it's not an easy job, this, though. He's winning the fight. He's won every round. But this guy, is, I mean, as he showed down the years, Victor, he is hard work. Yeah, and difficult to look good against. Difficult to, to really pin down, master. And I think Osborne's done nearly, if not as well as he could, really. I think he's definitely employed the right tactics. One or two times where he looked like he's on the cusp of, of building momentum, getting through, landing a big shot, a telling moment. But as is often the case, Adega's just able to, to ride out the moments of danger, find a little bit of safety and, and then move on. He's been patient, hasn't he, Osborne? And I think that, that kind of comes a little bit with, with age as well, because he would have looked at... Adega is his opponent tonight. He wasn't the original opponent, as we know, and he'll have thought to himself, OK, well, this, this will be what it will be. I'm not going to obsess about trying to stop this guy just because not many people have managed it. I'm just going to box and we'll see what happens. And he did just manage to just kind of catch his elbow on the rope there, which helped him stay up there, Adega, but still he's... It is impressive the way he manages to somehow Absolute. get those long legs back underneath it. And also, you you were sort of one, just wondering aloud about the psychology a moment ago. So just looking up at, at Victor in the other corner, you know, he's he's pretty much there on his own. He's got someone who can help out if he was cut, but he is there. It's a one-man operation, this, and you know, it's it's me against the lot of you. Effectively, is the mindset. It's uh, and that's. That's where the kind of pride and effort and everything comes to. It's a real stubbornness that's required. An individual stubborn pursuit. And he carries it out absolutely to the letter. He really does. It's the have gloves will travel, isn't it? As I said, the last few weeks, Oldham, Bournemouth, Leicester, and then a home tie for him, really. In loose geographical terms, travelling to Brentwood from Southwark, which is banging the centre of London. That's where he he boxes out of and he'll be off wherever wherever a decent purse takes him absolutely he's been busy this is his fourth fight in around about four weeks he boxed on the 1st of june 
Leicester two weeks ago, seven days ago he was down in Bournemouth and here he is now in Essex a, a week on. So he has been busy. And by the way, one of those kick-started June was when a, a young sort of prospect, unbeaten in seven, he wasn't quite ready for, for what was in front of him and he won that night. So that's why Osborne had to be switched on tonight. He's not always pretty with Adega, but he does what he does and it's up to his opponent to try and work it out and stop him doing it. And as regards that job required tonight, I think Osborne's done it pretty well in the circumstances. It, it was never going to be an oil painting. It was just a case of cut your cloth, what's required, and I think he's done, he's done all the right things, Osborne. Absolutely. Box in February, that fight against Grant Dennis was at the start of February, February the 10th, I think, so it's been a little while. This isn't the fight that they wanted, but obviously he still wanted to fight. Got to stay as busy as you can. Activity is absolutely key. We, we see so many examples of that, particularly recently at the very top end of the sport, but at all levels of the sport, activity is crucial into the final minute and... Adega's done a good job of that a lot of the time in the last couple of rounds. Osborne will come in, and as he comes in, he'll move forward himself, smother him, lean over the top of him, and then look at the referee. Atmosphere's just starting to build. It's, uh, it's getting busy here. A couple of ticket sellers still to come, particularly Jimmy Sainz from Brentwood. He's going to have a lot of his friends and family and fans here to, to watch him. Unbeaten uh, puncher and his, his fellow matchroom mate uh, from the Tony Sims gym, George Liddard, the Billericay bomber, he's in action as well. So we've got some two young prospects effectively on loan from Eddie Hearn in action a bit later on. And they'll have sold plenty of tickets, that's for sure. Well, he might be slightly frustrated. I, I just think I saw a little curse there from James Osborne, but he needn't be. It's always going to be a tough assignment tonight. And I think he applied himself correctly, tactically, appropriately as well, and get him back in action, get a win, and, and move on, Andy. Exactly. And, and it, tonight, really, for him, it was a case of just fighting, really getting back out and having a fight because these aren't the fights that he wants. He wants competitive fights. He wants to see how far he can go. He wants to test himself. That's what he's in this for. That's why he's a professional. That's why he's got full time as a pro. But it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. Getting the right fights can be tricky. And he worked hard over the six rounds there, so it was worth it. But it was never going to be easy, was nah, it? Nah. A couple of times it looked like he might just land a, a really telling punch and and then build on to, to something, but he can smile now. <laughs> he knows the business, the game, and that, that's, that's part of the, the story here tonight with Victor Odega. He is very much part of the foundations of, of this great sport. And he'll probably be at a venue near you in the next week or two. Let's get confirmation of it once again with Huss. Sixty to fifty-three, and your winner, James Ozzy Osborne. Well, it's not one we're going to add to the rainy day fights for sure. But it was a, it was a, it was a, a potentially troublesome assignment tonight for James Osborne, and he's won. I'm not sure there's, there's too much he can look back on him, himself, Andy, to, to think about what he could have been done differently. Just get busy, get paid, get some rounds, and it'll maybe some little things that he saw in there tonight will stick in his mind for a future opponent going forward. Yeah, exactly. I think that's all it is, really. You put that one in the rear view, you move on, you, you try and get a more challenging opponent next time out and I'm sure that's what he's about to say to Ali. So Osborne moves to six and all. Oh, they'll be targeting bigger nights, bigger bigger fights. 
Yeah, bigger name opponents and maybe titles further down the line. Let's uh, get the low down with Ali. Show. You're a fan favourite here. Yeah. That was another win under your belt. Just sum up your performance. Uh, frustrating, really. It's quite awkward. Uh, it's been a tough day at all for me. My little girl's been in hospital all day, so I've been out of the hospital all day, but I just had to get the job done, really. But it's awkward and frustrating, really. Yeah, he is a tricky opponent to look good against. You got the knockdown, maybe arguably a few more. They weren't called the knockdowns, yeah. but. What was the sort of game plan when you went in there? What did you want to show? Because late change of opponent as well. I just wanted to get the job done today. It's, uh, just been a tough day to be honest. And I uh, just wanted to get it done and uh, I've got to get back up the hospital after. That's it. Well, you got the job done, you got the win. What is next for you? Comms team are talking about titles, maybe in Southern area. What is your plan? Yeah, I just want a title next. I'll leave you up to my manager, Lee, and from my other job. Get another one, hopefully, September, get a title. Great to have you on the show. Cheers, thank you.